Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be a fun styling video where I'm going to recreate some outfits from Anatomy of a Scandal as well as share some style pointers that I took note of while watching the show. Now we've just finished watching Anatomy of a Scandal on Netflix that was only released in April. It's a limited series of only about six episodes and we really quite enjoyed it. There was a bit of a BS plot twist in the middle but it ended quite well and I personally thought that the courtroom scenes were really well done and it's really hard not to enjoy a show that's got an element of courtroom drama, politics, the London streetscape and really beautiful people. Rest assured I won't be sharing any spoilers in this video. Now aside from the courtroom scenes that made quite an impression on me, something else that I took away from the series were the outfits worn by Sienna Miller's character. Her style is impeccable. Even the stuff that she wears lounging around the house or in the countryside with her kids on the weekend, every single outfit is on point. Now because of the outfits that she's wearing it's probably safe to assume that it's set sometime in autumn in London because we're seeing a lot of turtleneck knits, coats, jackets, boots, and her character embraces a lot of elegant tailoring. So there's nothing that's too tight, nothing that's too revealing. Everything's very classic and dignified, but very fashion forward. It gives me a lot of Phoebe Philo, old Celine vibes. Now, most of the time when I'm watching shows and admiring the fashion, I find that a lot of the clothes are quite unattainable or way out of my price range because a lot of the stylists for these shows have access to all of the designer clothes that they want. Now, it's also the case with Anatomy of a Scandal, there are a fair few designer pieces but something that's great about the looks is that they can be easily recreated with items that you probably already own in your wardrobe because Sienna Miller's character has such a classic and timeless style. Now I immediately recognize the Max Mara Manuela coat when Sienna Miller was wearing it. I've actually tried this one on too. It retails for about 4,000 Australian dollars and so it is out of my price range. But the Max Mara coat has been around for ages and the camel coat is iconic and readily available from so many different labels. And so that's just one example of the timeless pieces that are featured. So in this video, I'm going to recreate four different outfits for you, styled using pieces that are already in my wardrobe. I haven't gone out and bought anything new for the purposes of this video. And where I don't have the exact item, I've just pulled something that is similar or inspired by in order to still get the same effect of that outfit. Now for the purposes of this video I'm only going to stick to outfits that have been worn by Sienna Miller's character Sophie in the series. Although I could probably share an outfit that's inspired by Michelle Dockery's character. more traditional dress as opposed to style. Now the first look that I'm going to recreate is one that featured in the latter half of the series and it's where the character Sophie is wearing a shirt dress with a camel mat coat and some pointed ankle boots. Now the shirt dress that she's wearing is a grey colour and the jacket that she's wearing is a single breasted trench coat quite similar to a Macintosh coat. So to recreate that look using pieces from my wardrobe I've got here a shirt dress from Everlane that has a belt as part of it and I've also got a camel single breasted Macintosh jacket and I think that these two really do capture the vibe of Sophie's outfit. You're getting a more fitted silhouette from the shirt dress but the Macintosh is really quite a relaxed fit. And then she finishes things off with a pair of ankle boots and so I have a pair of pointy ankle boots here from Sarah Flint that I also think give off the vibe. And so let's see how these all go together. The next outfit that I'm going to recreate is one that Sophie wears when she's picking up her kids from school. And just a bit of a side note guys, this outfit is so far from what I wear when I'm picking up my kids from school. There's a lot of oversized fleece going on. But she's got her hair up in a low bun and she's wearing a grey turtleneck knit with a rust coloured collarless jacket and these beige wide leg trousers with a pair of black boots I believe. It's hard to see from the imagery online so I probably have to revisit the episode. And while I don't have the exact colours of the pieces that she's wearing, 
retiring, I do have the same styles. And so in an attempt to recreate that look, I've got here my modern style jacket from The Curated. This is called The Modern Coat and it's featured in my coat collection video as well as my curated coat collection video that I will link down below just so that you can have a watch if you are interested. So it's that same colourless style. I also have here a grey turtleneck from Everlane which is much loved. But this is very similar to the colour that Sophie's wearing in this outfit. And she's also paired those items with a pair of looser wide leg trousers. And if you've been watching my videos for some time, then this style of trouser from the Frankie shop will not be new to you. I have them in a beige colour as well as a chocolate brown colour. I'm pretty sure that she's wearing a beige colour in her outfit, which complements the dark tone of the jacket that she's wearing. But considering the coat that I'm wearing is a lighter tone, I'm going to flip it and I'm going to wear my darker trousers with it instead just to have a little bit more of a balanced color palette as you can see there and I'm going to pair that with a pair of black ankle boots and so let's see how this one goes probably up there with one of my favorite outfits that she wears in the series and she's wearing a single breasted black blazer, a brighter colored turtleneck knit jumper, a camel midi skirt that is somewhat of an A-line shape and she's wearing a pair of knee high boots. Now again I don't have the exact colors of the items that she's wearing but I do have similar pieces and so I'm going to recreate a look that is inspired by that. And so starting off with blazers I have two different options here for a single breasted black blazer. The first one is this oversized 90s cut design from Everlane. This one I have in the smaller size available the double zero because it is quite an oversized cut. And I also have the oversized classic blazer from The Curated. And this is one that was designed in collaboration with Emma Hill. The curated version of the jacket has silk in its fabric. And so naturally it's got a more flowy feel. Whereas the Everlane version is a wool mix. And so this has a more structured feel. I think for this look, I might rely on the flowier version which is the curated blazer. Now, when it comes to the turtleneck knit, I don't have any knits that are that rusty, ready brown color. So instead I'm going to rely on a camel colored knit, which is a warm toned knit, which should still give off the same vibe. This is a style that is much loved in my wardrobe. It is the same style as the gray version that I featured in one of the earlier outfits. And the camel version I've had for a few years. I've worn this heap. I really quite love this one. Let's pop this on there to be worn. And when it comes to the skirt, I I would really love to add a camel midi skirt just like Sienna Miller's character in my wardrobe that is now on my wish list. But for the time being, I have a khaki brown version which should still give off the same vibe. This is one that I purchased many years ago from Uniqlo. This is the Uniqlo and Le Mer collaboration. This was really inexpensive as well. It was only about $60. And so I think that pairing these three pieces together while they're not the same colors would still give off the same vibes as Sienna Miller's character's outfit. And of course, I have to finish off the look with a pair of knee-high boots. These are the only pair of heeled knee-high boots that I have in my wardrobe, and they so happen to be a chocolate brown. Pretty sure she's wearing a pair of tan brown boots in her look. These are a pair of boots that I have from Jane Debster, which is an Australian footwear label. I'm pretty sure that they release them each year, and so I will link them down below. And so let's see how all these pieces go together. to share with you is a combination between two different outfits that she wears in the series. The first is the teal dress that she wears with that same colorless coat from an earlier outfit when she goes to visit her husband at work for lunch. And for me, that pop of color was really quite impactful. And the next look is where she's wearing her Max Mara camel coat and she's pairing it with a flowier shirt dress that's got a subtle pattern on it. And she also wears that Max Mara coat in an earlier part of the series where she's worn it over a white shift dress. So the look that I've put together here is certainly one that's in 
inspired by those looks. I'm going to wear my camel coat, which is one from The Curated, a really flowy camel coat, iconic thanks to the Max Mara coats. And I'm going to pair it here with a subtle printed dress in this teal color from The Fold. The color is very similar to what Sophie's wearing, and I think the subtle pattern is very similar to that flowy shirt dress that Sophie wears under her camel coat. And so let's see how this one goes. Aside from the beauty of the outfits, I think there are a heap of useful style notes that we can take away from those outfits, but I've summarised them into three key points. The first is that the outfits really reinforce the idea of investing in classics. So over on my blog, I've harped on about the classic pieces that you should be investing in your wardrobe, and while it's not within anyone's budget, not even my budget, to invest in the iconic items like a Max Mara coat, for example, you can still achieve that same look by looking to a contemporary brand and paying a fraction of the price, or even looking towards a designer's sister or diffusion lines. Similarly with her wearing black blazers and timeless turtleneck knits, I think that the knits that you should invest in your wardrobe should be high quality. You should be looking to cashmere and merino because while they are more of an investment on the hip pocket, they will last a lot longer and they just feel so much better when you're wearing them. Whereas if you were to go for a high street version, which is made of polyester, those things don't really last more than a season. And so Sienna Miller's character style really really reinforce that for me. The second point is that you can still play with colour while enjoying a minimal colour palette. And so in the last few years, I've really paired it back when it comes to colour. And if anything, my colour palette has become a little bit too simplistic. And so it's nice to see her include pops of colour in her outfits. Like she's got a bit of rust tones. She's got the teal tone. And I do have those pops of colour in my wardrobe, but I don't really play with them as much as I should. And so if anything, seeing those outfits has just encouraged me to play around with a little bit more colour while still observing the minimal colour palette. The rule of thumb that I typically follow when it comes to colour in my outfits is the three color rule and that's something that would still apply when you're playing with a pop of color I think that I would put in a little bit of teal with camel or black and I think that, that would work really well and so having those pops of color and those statement pieces just adds a little bit more interest to your wardrobe and the last styling note that I wanted to share with you in this video after watching the series is that it really reinforced to me that classic style is timeless and ageless Sienna Miller has been fashion inspiration for about 20 years and so I've always known her as a fashion icon but she's 40 now and she's had children and she still looks incredibly stylish. I think Sienna Miller in real life probably embraces more trends than her character Sophie in the show but I really liked how timeless and ageless she looked and how it doesn't have to be frumpy when kids are in the picture. You know I'm not far away from 40 and I've really embraced classic style and I can't see that changing and so it's been really validating in the way in which my personal style has shifted in my 30s and it's just encouraged me to stay on that path. Normally I don't get a lot of fashion inspiration you know from crime shows of all things but I think the combination of it being Sienna Miller and her being a fashion icon you know for decades I would just be on high alert every time there was a scene with her in it. I'd be like what are you wearing? So thank you so much for watching guys. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that it gave you a little bit of inspiration to style some new outfits from existing pieces in your wardrobe. If you like this video then let me know by hitting that thumbs up button and and if you're new around here, then I would love it if you stuck around and subscribed to my channel. I make videos on personal style, handbags, and the occasional vlog here and there. I'm still pretty fresh to YouTube, and so I have a heap of ideas. It's just finding the time to execute them. If you're new around here, then I would love it if you stuck around and subscribed to my channel if you haven't already. I make videos about personal style, workwear, handbags, the occasional vlog here and there of my life in Sydney. All the items that I've worn will be linked in the description section below, and where an item has sold out or is a number of years old, then I will do my best to find something that is very similar. I think that's all of the admin, so I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!